All right, what's up, y'all? It's like Van here. In today's video, <laughs> you, you see by that title, Pick and Roll Academy, Part One. All right, now this is basic info, um, but but the title is obviously gonna have a couple things we're depicting in here. So anyway, quick disclaimer: there's gonna be a lot of pauses in this video. There's gonna be a lot of explanations. All right, <laughs> so stick with me. All this stuff is informational, so that's the reason I'm pausing it. I'm just here to show you guys things. And anyway, let's just get right into this. So first of all. As you can see on the top, there's gonna be captions for all these. This one is like what dribbling will do to create the switches that you want. Now, obviously, when you're playing man defense, like you obviously do in park, nobody runs zones in park. Um, when you're playing man defense like this, the only way you like force somebody to switch is to get very open. Um, now, if you get very open as a guard, but the defense picks up on you, then your big man needs to be the one who gets who continuously keeps people getting open so you see kitchen is he dribbles really nice right here gets himself open on the wing and then as soon as the big man steps up to him i'm already looping in because he's no longer open that's the that's the whole aspect of pick and roll now you see again because of my like high iq slip right here not that like this is like a very hard thing to do this is a pretty basic one um very easy right here as a as a roller to see that like this is gonna be wide open <laughs> because kitchen kitchen busted his dude and he caught him on a region so boom i know me i mean it's very it's very common sense when when your guard gets wide open get the heck away from him you got to dip to the paint at that point and make this big man right here choose between you or your or your ball handler because at this point white shirt is completely out of this play it's a two-on-one you got to get to the paint you got to allow your shooter to to stay on the wing so Anyway, you see I loop behind. My player's alley-oop finishing ability is just nuts, but you can honestly do that with almost any build in the game. Um, now, this right here, just simple textbook slip. I wanted to show you guys this too. So, I'm already seeing right here, boom, green shirt is looking to step up. He's creeping up, and yellow is low-key kind of out of the play already completely too. So, this right here, when you see this little opening, you see how I kind of like run to the right a little bit? When you see this opening, you gotta take it. So, boom! I, I cut right through this, right through the opening. Easy dunk. Simple as that. We're gonna run that back one more time. Um, the reason I saw this coming, I'll kind of explain this. He was getting worked a little bit, right? And just the the ability to get open from kitchen, like speed and shooting, are what you need from your guard to properly run. Like, what's the word? To properly run pick and roll, I guess, if that's what you want, if that's how you want to explain it. Um, speed and shooting. Now, height is actually kind of important too for slips because the taller your point guard is, the more the more willing they are to switch on everything because they're similar heights. So in this situation, Kitchen's at the two, I'm at the three, and we have a point guard who is actually a lockdown. So we're running like double big pick and roll. So you already know they're both kind of slow. So they're definitely looking to switch. So this is where you can abuse things like this a little bit. Um, anyway, that was just simple, simple little slip. Um, now the next two clips I'm showing you guys here are going to be double teams where if you continue to hold B right here, nothing will ever be open. Now, right here, I'm setting the, I'm actually setting the screen. There's no slip involved on this, even though I low-key should have, but this is kind of where like, he's still trying to fight through this and he's working through it and they just it's just a miscommunication basically but if you <laughs> if you this is a very simple one like you obviously need to know this but well and we'll just skip through that because of that but um if you don't know about this like bro you just you're not meant you're not meant to play inside big <laughs> like you gotta if, if you're just someone that's gonna hold b and allow your guard to get double teamed you clearly don't know what you're doing but anyway um again another double team on the ball so you see right here I, my plan was to slip already but it, again it's just miscommunications now this was such a clean slip right here that even if he tried to follow it he still wouldn't be able to like you see like but then they just double team so again it's just simple reads now in the next few videos we'll maybe not even next few videos just the next video we'll kind of depict how these reads right here sometimes Sometimes as a ball handler, you do need to make that pass to the corner. But again, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. Because you see, low-key, like, certain people play that a little bit different. Now, this right here, this is low-key kind of like defensive tips right here for the pick and roll. 
You see, I, I don't really set the pick fully because I, I like just, I had a feeling they were gonna try to switch, but they didn't. So right here, you see like, I saw I saw a white, I saw a dude in the, I think it's the heat jersey, right? Um, just the white jersey, whatever it is. I saw him stepping up a little bit, so I let go of the pick to try to beat him. And low-key, like, being as tall as he is, it's hard to guard pick and roll like that. Like, like he did a really good job at it, though. And that's what I'm kind of explaining to you guys right here. This was really good hedge defense. It's just, again, the, the alley-oop finishing ability from this from the player that I have is just so, so like, night and day from any other, any other big man that I would run with. Um, again, so he steps out just a little bit to, like, fake the hedge, basically. But this is where, like, speed in the pick and roll helps so much whether it's defensively or offensively because i am way faster than him he's way slower than me so he has almost like close to no room to to hedge at all so that's where this this creates this right here the the i wouldn't even call it like yeah it was just hedge defense so anyway that was a nice little nice little clip there to explain things to you guys now right here again is a is a perfect slip but, and generally you'll see the stage guys do this a lot, but bro, peep the score. Okay, side side note, people in stage are stupid, bro. Like they got literally close to zero IQ. <laughs> like people will be down by five points and just give lanes like this up where they literally just are like, no threes, no threes. <laughs> and just allow you to take 100% like dunks. But then you see they, they do something very tragic here. Um, I just want to show you guys this though. So early passes, I want to explain how this will happen quite a bit and your point guard will get a little uncomfortable um, on these double teams. So to kind of stay on the double team topic, um, your point guard will get a little uncomfortable and you're going to have a couple possessions that really do go wrong. Like you're going to be holding X because you're anticipating maybe a lob. And then as soon as you're holding X, you're shooting the ball right now on accident. And then Low-key, I've greened them a couple times, but um, no, nah, it's, it's pretty bad. You don't, you don't want to ever encounter that. But anyway, so right here, because of the early pass, they, they're both on the same idea. Like this is, this is where like these, uh, this whole topic of miscommunications happen is like where they both had the same idea to guard ball. And then because they saw the pass go to me, they were both thinking, oh, well, my teammate is on ball. So I'll just drop but then they both do the exact same thing. They get mad at each other, <laughs> simple as that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, now this is switch everything. This is where like, now this is textbook. This is what me and AK do every single time because AK being a pure shot creator, right? Shots NA, um, my, man's, my man is a pure shot creator, six foot three. Um, with different styles of point guards, you'll see different styles of defense a lot. Um, this right here, like I said, he's a 6'3 pure shot creator, a very quick, versatile offensive player, just offensive threat completely. And people get kind of scared of that, bro. Like if you don't have a build that keeps up with it, especially around screens, it definitely forces people to play sides quite a bit. So what you see here, here, I'll rewind it one more time. I give him the ball, he gets the big on him. Now, every time we see a switch like that, and this is this is where like if you have a low IQ point guard, I'm not I'm not really calling AK a low IQ point guard, but I kind of tailored this whole thing around just just AK specifically because it was hard for him to make reads early on. Um, so what we do now, I just I just hold B to like set a screen 100% of the time. Like like I am just going to run strictly pick and roll with him. But then as soon as they switch the big man onto him right here. So again, I'm gonna rewind it one more time um, because I kind of cut the clip off a little too early. Um, you see right here, guard is supposed to be on AK and the big man steps up to him. So now, as soon as we see that, we just run the slip back. So they're gonna think we're just gonna spam screens again. And they're like, well, why the heck would you do that? You're just letting our guard switch back onto the point guard. But little do they know, I'm not actually setting a screen again. I'm just cutting right down the middle. <laughs> so that is the switch everything counter. Um, now really a slip in general is just the switch everything counter. But again, for a low IQ point guard, that's how you're gonna wanna do it. You're gonna wanna set an actual screen so they fully switch and then and then you just run it back and slip on the second one. Um, this right here, like I, like I said previously in the video, miscommunications happen um, and you gotta take advantage of them. Like this right here wasn't like the easiest role ever. Like it's, it's a little confusing because you just have to like, what I'm reading right here is that 
this white this dude in white wasn't completely out of the play like he he didn't have to he didn't have to well the dude the shirtless dude didn't have to step up right but you have to read everything as the screener so as soon as you see that shirtless dude step up you gotta dip like <laughs> and right here this is like straight triple team but fortunately the dude in the corner is willing to actually stay corner because as soon as you get two dudes to cut off this sometimes it can be tragic bro like <laughs> but anyway again miscommunications happen so you got to take advantage of them simple as that um now the last clip i have here i titled it need for speed um now with my pure lock in pick and roll for those of you who don't know i made a six foot seven pure lockdown for pick and roll purposes and you're like what the heck would you do that for i got 84 speed instead of 76 with this athletic finisher now honestly bro i don't know what the heck i would do in pick and roll if i had 50 speed or 40 speed it's tough like because and this is why i never make oversized big men because like i can't even imagine like my my point guard getting stepped up on like this right and i have nothing to do about it like like you literally can't do anything about it <laughs> you're not gonna get slips ever unless it's like a very easy easy slip but anyway need for speed so what again my my whole point of this is that with my pure lock i can do this on demand now but with this on with this takeover on it made it a little easier for this to happen now what they do is they switch right here right and i accidentally held on to the screen now normally i would let go of it as soon as i see this and just dip right but sometimes if you do that they just aren't going to switch because then if you if you slip too much like if you over slip they're not gonna switch anymore. They're just gonna be like, all right, this dude's totally bluffing. Like, <laughs> like, bro, he hasn't set a single pick in this entire game. Just run through him. Like, he's not even gonna, he's not even gonna hold B on you. But anyway, if you actually do hold B, they'll switch most likely because you're gonna body whoever's on the offensive end unless he's a good defender. But um, anyway, so now I get like kind of behind him and it's a race to the basket. But this is where, like, again, speed kills. It's just it's just so essential you need speed <laughs> as a pick and roller i mean it's simple as that um now the reason my dude is strictly pick and roll is because he doesn't have many post-up badges he doesn't have like a crazy iso game in the 2v2 so i mean a lot of my game is built on pick and roll and only that um post scores i don't know what the heck to tell you guys like it's tough it's a tough life in pick and roll as a post score especially if a build like mine is is on the def on the defensive end because if you have no speed okay just quick little tip right here right and this is how we'll end the video and then i hope you guys did enjoy this and we'll bring you more of this stuff more in depth the next time too but um just a little tip all right if you're gonna run pick and roll like here's how i would put it if you're a seven foot three post scorer you don't belong in pick and roll it's simple as that like if a build like mine is guarding your seven foot three post score and pick and roll you're never going to score off pick and rolls now however i am six foot eleven with bronze rim protector so a, po a post score already is a bad matchup for me so like it it's kind of like win win lose situations um i would say here's how it works in 2v2 that matchup definitely benefits post scores because you can just spam two pointers um i would say in 3v3 it definitely benefits athletic finishers and undersized bigs because it's easy to lock up your pick and roll like like for me if a if a post score is setting picks in the pick and roll on 3v3 i'm a hedge super hard because i know i can recover to his slow <laughs> slow galoop self um so anyway the whole point is that like speed is very essential to pick and roll and if you don't have it you have to have a different play style of offense now if some people are just stupid right and they don't realize that you have a post score at seven foot three setting screens and that you can actually help pretty hard off of that then that's their own problem and more power to you because like not everybody you run into in this game is gonna be smart enough to actually stop that but anyway just a quick little note like i said back end back end of pick and roll you need speed but you also need rim protecting too because if you're on the back end of a pick and roll that generally means you're a big man if you're a big man that means you're going to be regarding other big men and other big men tend to be post scores, post scores on the 2v2. So <laughs> you just have to have a build who's fast enough to hold on to that or to, to be able to strap up a post score. Or my bad, a build that's fast enough to play hedge defense properly like you would want it to if you don't have a lockdown on your team. Now that's where like the lock and post combo is honestly just so crazy. They're just they're just like soulmates for each other as a build. Like Like a pure lock, no offensive ability at all. What does that mean? The post score gets the ball run through them the entire game. Um, 
Now, a post score, way too slow to play hedge defense, right? But it doesn't matter because a pure lock is literally the best build for getting through screens like that. Um, what you can do sometimes, ugh, but it gets dicey, is like you can try to give the, it just, you have to have the right lineup for it. You got to be able to have a ball handler that makes, that like the post score has to line up on. Two ball handlers, low key, that can both still set screens is honestly the, the post score counter, but that's such a rare thing and it's like almost impossible to come up with. So <laughs> that's, that's that. Um, but anyway, that's all for the vid. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like I said, feel free to drop a like, sub if you knew all that good stuff um like i said pick and roll academy part two it will be coming eventually and i'll this was just basic info i'm gonna dive into like i'm gonna dive into specifics a little bit more um in like future videos but anyway like i said just stay tuned for those we'll get more of these videos for sure i know you guys love the iq stuff um and that it's like very big for you know how you like to hi it's just it's just good videos of mine to watch but anyway i'm gonna load this up get some games in <laughs> Um, if you guys would like to sub if you're new, feel free to, um, drop a like if you could on the video. Let's try to get this like, yo, first of all, leave, leave a Laker in the comments if you made it to the end of the video, but let's try to get this at least like 200 likes, please. Maybe like 150. <laughs> um, I want this series to really take off and I feel like this could be my niche in this game. So anyway, that's off the vid. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like I said, feel free to drop a like, sub if you knew all that good stuff. And then that, hope you enjoyed. Take these, man. Peace.